Well, who would have thought as recently as 12 months ago that we could get these two gentlemen sitting on the same stage, yet here they are representing Chipworks. Terry Ludlow, thank you very much for joining us uh, today, and Mike McLean, Senior Vice President of IP Services at Tech Insight. Mm. Now, Terry, obviously since 1992, when you started Chipworks, things have changed dramatically in the industry, and particularly at this time, where we've seen the uh, amount of litigation come down, we've seen uh, so many shifts, tectonic shifts in, in the IP industry. Uh, I assume that was part of the reason why uh, you initiated these conversations. Uh, not really. Um, you know, I didn't, and I could go back to 1989 when the predecessor to Tech Insights, Semiconductor Insights, was founded. Um, and you were part which, of that founding team. Yeah, sort of. Um, and then even beyond that, to the the predecessor to to that company that was called Mossade at that time. Yes. Um, it's it's a very cyclical business, um, but it's been, a, I'd say, steadily increasing demand over time. So, our I'd say our driving clients, our primary clients, are large multinational companies that are negotiating cross-licenses. If you look at, particularly in the US, I've looked at the stats recently, the litigation level is pretty steady for those guys. The NPE levels are up and down all over the place. And yes, the NPE, NPEs can at times be pretty good clients for us, uh, but that's the, the wildly variable one. And the people that are coming to us tend to be the, um, the more serious, the better funded NPEs, and those guys are less affected again by the variations and things. So overall, it's 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 been a pretty good year for us. Um, it was a, it was a, already a pretty good year and a pretty good 2015 when we uh, at the point where we decided to do the merger. Um, it's really about what the future looks like, and while Chipperx had a very bright future if it had gone forward on its own by combining the resources of the two, we just really accelerate that. Um, and you know, over the years, a lot of people would, would ask, why are the two top analytical firms in the world uh, here in Ottawa, 10 kilometers apart from each other? And it's, well, it's sort of an accident of birth, and we always said, well, it's an adversarial system. There has to be two companies so that we can, we can serve each end. Uh, when we sat down and actually looked at that, it wasn't a very good argument against it uh, because the, the amount of duplication, the amount of conflict uh, was fairly small. Plus, we've come up with ways of managing that conflict so that we'll be able to, in fact, serve our clients even better because if one of the groups that's serving them turns out to have a conflict, we can refer them to the other group that's still within the company and we haven't lost them as a client. Mm. Uh, but uh, again, and I invite both of you to, to comment on this, it's exactly as you say, there used to be a very strong rationale to have two, mm -hmm. because obviously in any uh, litigation, in any uh, investigation even into the intricacies of, of the semiconductor, there had to be a, you know, there had to be two points of view. Mm -hmm. um, to what extent have your clients sought assurance and what have you said to them to suggest that actually we might be a merged entity, but we can still keep those things in confidence? So I, I think the key part is we're, we're gathering rational evidence, right? That is our reason for being here, to have that forensic uh, engineering, uh, to go out and investigate products and, and create factual reports and factual information that can be used to uh, demonstrate that a patent is used and prove the value of that patent, right? And that factual approach really is consistent regardless of, of who we're working for and uh, the situation that is involved. So that's, that's a key foundation to that piece. And the other part is both businesses have really uh, built themselves on integrity and being very, very careful of client confidential information. And we've built that into the new structure with additional firewalls and additional security procedures um, to really make sure all client information is nailed down. And our clients have responded well to that. They've asked questions, they've tested it, they provided us suggestions on how to strengthen it, and we've, we've implemented that, and mm -hmm. I think we're in a place where our, our client base is very comfortable, and uh, we're seeing business uh, continue or even grow from levels uh, from when the merger was announced uh, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. So what were some of those suggestions? What have you implemented? Uh, looking at how we manage team assignments, um, making sure that uh, once people uh, are our staff on a particular engagement, there's some restrictions on future work uh, that they can do. 
Um, we have already have uh, systems in place for locking down client documents, locking down our analysis of those patents, so um, uh, educating our client base on what those systems are and, and how they're used, and then looking at our broader business systems and putting some extra security in there as well. So. Um, uh, mm. We're, we're very comfortable with the approach that's been taken. There. Because I guess it's difficult for any company in any industry to say we're going to merge to gain scale, in other words to eradicate the duplication, but on the other hand still keep it sufficiently separate to at least maintain that veneer of competition between the two operating entities, right? Well, it's not really a veneer of competition. It's no. the, it's the um, client confidentiality that we really have to worry about, right? And. Okay. We deal mainly with lawyers, and lawyers think in terms of, of a legal level of conflict, um, which is much stricter than people like engineers need to have. And we looked at uh, accounting firms, and you know, people who, um, the big four accounting firms, are very often advising both sides of an M&A instance. Um, they have some best practices that we've looked at and we've borrowed and brought into our company, so we can give our clients that same assurance that there's enough of a significant level of, of, of firewalling and protection uh, for, against leakage of, of data uh, or of information from side to side. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to give them that assurance that they're just, you know, it's not going to be us if the data leaks from one to the other. And, right. and the key piece really is the integration of the engineering expertise and the technical library. Mm -hmm. right? That massive increase in the amount of content that's available to both practices now uh, the extra technical resource, the specialty resource that was embedded in both companies that now is pooled together, um, the power of that and the value that that delivers to our clients um, really is what is most exciting about this and what we're uh, getting in terms of response from the marketplace is there's a lot of conversation about that piece more than really any of these other issues. That's a, a brief initial conversation. People are comfortable with it. We move more on to the value that's being created than any of the risk that needs to be managed. Mm. So you, you couldn't be one of your lab engineers at Chipworks and then resign and join Tech Insights? You, you wouldn't so so it's, it's not a structure that is Chipworks and, and Tech Insights operating as they have been in parallel, right? The organization is combining into uh, a larger Tech Insights with a common pool of engineering uh, talent there. The two IP practices are firewalled and separated. Um, and, and will be maintained as independent operations. But the overall business is, is not sort of a parallel operating uh, of, of the two historic businesses. There is definitely significant integration of the labs and the engineering, engineering infrastructure. Yes, indeed, Terry, you were saying that your name card is going to disappear. Your business card, your Chipworks business card, is not going to be uh, around next, next year. So that integration is presumably That's right. going to complete from the 1st of January when you become in, president of the company. In, um, in mid-January, we're going to be launching a new website with a new look, and the new Tech Insights uh, will, will appear in the, on the world stage. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll include, as Mike said, uh, probably the, the biggest critical mass of uh, technical specialists, subject matter experts um, in, this, in this field. So we'll, and, and so did the reasons for why you left Semiconductor Insights after you helped to found it in 89 uh, and prompted you to then start uh, Chipworks in 1992, have those reasons, uh, do they still have relevance today? Oh, they do. I, I mean, you know, it was all about, for me, it was all about the strategic direction of the company and what it was that we wanted to do. Um, over time, the two companies we haven't exactly been going in a parallel path. It's, it's actually kind of striking when we brought the two companies together just how complementary a lot of a lot of the uh, a lot of the tools, a lot of the subject matter um, areas of focus were. Um, the amount of duplication just wasn't wasn't as much as, as heavy as I expected. It does allow us more depth in some critical areas, but it's also given us a lot more breadth um, so that we can cover. A, a much broader range of the technology market, semiconductor, telecommunications, <coughs> consumer electronics, software, all of these things. Um, so when we're talking to clients, even our long-time client, clients, we can now give them a much broader uh, support across their entire business lines. Mm -hmm. That's been, I think, the biggest surprise to me through the integration is how complementary the two practices are. Right. Um, as Terry said, 
we had developed very different technical expertise as we had competed for business and gone after slightly different areas of technology. Um, so there's very little overlap in terms of that really strong technical competency between the two businesses. Um, they've got experts in, in some very interesting areas. We've got expertise in some others. And when you bring that together, again, the, the value that that gives our combined client set is, is really interesting uh, because they can access now that, that uh, greatly increased uh, amount of information and knowledge base. And now and we're, we're working hard on doing away with the we and they and just talking us, <laughs> yes. right? It, it, it's, still, it's still kind of new to us, right? right. Yeah. Next time we'll have you sitting on a couch rather right. than That'll in separate be fine, chairs. Yeah. Uh, in fact, next time is going to come around fairly soon. Mm -hmm. uh, IPBC Global, Ottawa, your hometown, 18th to the 20th of June. What do you think uh, six months from now are some of the critical topics that people will be discussing when we come to your hometown for the next IPBC Global? Well, that's an interesting question because, I mean, I wouldn't have expected to be talking about the uh, European Unitied Patent Court again at this point. And the, uh, the British government threw us a nice curve a, a, a week or so ago. They did indeed. Um, they uh, decided to ratify. Well, they, they, uh, they signaled they that sort they of, would. They have signaled that they would, yeah. Yes. We, could, we can see where that goes. And I'm sure that will be Do you have any doubt that it won't go ahead? I have no doubt that it'll go ahead at some point. It's a question of how rapidly it'll go ahead. And it looked like Brexit just kind of put everything on hold for a couple of years. Now maybe it's six months, right? So Indeed. instead of being up and running by the time we, we get to Ottawa uh, and reconvene in Ottawa, it'll probably be imminent um, is the best guess that I would have right now, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which is great news uh, because pulling together that, that big alternate venue for, um, for settling patent disputes as an alternative to the U.S. Um, is wonderful news, I think, for our business and for the, uh, the IP business in general. Mm -hmm. right. And Mike, uh, we'll also be six months into that other great uncertain factor, and that is the Trump presidency. Mm -hmm. To what extent do you expect American visitors who travel to Ottawa for IPBC Global to actually move there in the process? <laughs> uh, we'll have refugee status applications <laughs> available at the, uh, the table. <laughs> I would expect very few. I think they'll have a great time in Ottawa and want to come back, but uh, yeah, I don't see much of a mass migration happening uh, as, as a result. All right. It's good to talk to you yeah. both. Thank you again. Uh, we've been speaking with uh, Terry Ludlow from uh, Chipworks, soon to be fully integrated into Tech Insights from where Mike McLean, Senior Vice President of uh, IP Services, joined us. And I'm Mark Laudy here at IPBC Asia 2016 in Shanghai.